Welcome back to Harbour Unboxed. Today we have another amazing modded system from Alex and this time he's building in the Cooler Master Cosmos 2 and this is a Threadripper 1950X build. Anyway, enough from me. I'll hand it over to Alex to tell you more about the specs, design and all that good stuff and of course he will show you the entire build process as well and all the modifications that he made. So grab yourself a nice beverage, sit back, relax because this is going to be good. Hey, what's going on guys? Alex here and it's great to be back with another case modded system. It's a pretty big one this time in the Cooler Master Cosmos 2 25th anniversary edition case. So I'll just quickly go over what I did to the case and what was my main goal to achieve with this case mod and then I'll let you guys enjoy the time lapse video. Now obviously the Cosmos 2 has been around for quite a while and I think that Cooler Master did a very good job with the 25th anniversary edition. However, it could have definitely used a bit more work in order to bring it up to today's standards in terms of the hardware and water cooling support inside the case. I mean, for such a large case, out of the box, it only supports a thin 360mm radiator in the top and that's pretty much it. So this is my version of what I think the 25th anniversary edition Cosmos 2 should be. Now, I didn't want to do a lot of changes to the outside of the case as I wanted to preserve the look that Cooler Master had intended for it. So the main things I did on the outside was to just simply paint the front and top panel mesh grills purple to go with one of Cooler Master's main colors. And then I've also added the 25th anniversary logo to the front. So I focused all of my time on the inside of the case on what I could do to improve it. Since it's such a large case, I had enough room to go for a dual water cooling loop, even though it's not necessary. It's just something I wanted to do and I think it looks cool. So there's a 360 millimeter radiator in the top, which cools the CPU. And I also managed to fit a 480 millimeter radiator in the front with some slight modifications, mainly to the mid plate in order to fit the radiator on the inside. And then I also had to slightly shift the hard drive cages in the bottom. So the 480mm radiator cools the Vega 64 graphics card by itself, which I'll admit is pretty overkill. But then again, a lot of things about case modded systems is pretty overkill anyways. Other things I did is um, also take out all of the other hard drive cages that were at the front panel of the case, along with the 5.25 inch bays as well. And I chose to stick just with the 4 hard drive cages in the bottom. And I also did shave the top off of the hard drive cages at the bottom here. And this is mainly so you can actually see the hard drives when they're in there. And then it's also allowed enough room for my water cooling pass through fittings to fit through this bottom section of the case. And you'll see them go just over the hard drive and also a little bit over the power supply as well. I've also done a cover for the section of the case next to the motherboard where the two alpha cool pump and reservoir combos are mounted. And also this nice mirrored piece of acrylic that covers the midsection. And then I drilled all of the um, water cooling pass through holes into that for a super clean water cooling system overall. The water cooling components were provided by AlphaCool and you'll see that I've used their pre-bent chrome plated brass tubes which look pretty awesome in this build. The main idea was to have a really nice and clean system on the inside of the case, uh, something that's obviously been modded but still kind of looks stock as if the case was designed this way. So I think I managed to achieve this look but let us know in the comments below what you guys think. Now for the rest of the specs we have the ASUS ROG Zenith Extreme motherboard. This houses the AMD Ryzen Threadripper 1950X CPU with 32 gigs of ZX Shield RGB, 3200 MHz DDR4 memory. Then there's the Vega 64 graphics card, which I've already mentioned. Um, I did try to get my hands uh, on a second card uh, to go with the uh, Crossfire Vega 64s, but obviously with the um, shortage is uh, going on at the moment, it was a bit hard to, to get my hands on, on another card uh, in time to finish this build. So I chose to go just with the one card and then um, I've mounted it vertically. And um, I did that using one of the Cooler Master um, GPU vertical mounting kits, uh, which they offer. And then I've also done some slight modifications to this as well. In terms of storage, there's uh, actually quite an insane amount of storage in this system. Um, aside from the four hard drives at the bottom, there's also a 500 gig Samsung 960 Evo M.2 drive on the motherboard. There are also two 480 gigabyte A-Pacer Armor SSDs, which I've mounted to the top section of this cover that I've created just behind the reservoirs here. And also with the hard drives in the bottom, there are two Firecuda 2 terabyte SSHDs and then also two uh, Seagate Barracuda 6 terabyte hard drives as well. So with this, you get the sort of faster SSHD storage with the Firecuda uh, and then also very large expanded storage with the two 6 terabyte Barracudas. And all this is powered by the Cooler Master Master Watt Maker 1200 watt power supply. And in terms of the fans, um, I've used Cooler Master Master Fan Pro RGB fans throughout. Um, there are seven of them in total, which are 120 mil on the two radiators and then also a 140 mil at the back. And all these are the air pressure version of the fan. In terms of the custom cables and the lighting that you'll see throughout the case, uh, this has all been provided by Cable Mod. That's pretty much it for me, guys. I'm going to stop talking right here. I'll let you guys enjoy the time lapse video. I hope you enjoyed the um, system as well, and I'll see you in the next one. Cheers. 